Hello friends and subscribers. A traditional life. This video will address my thoughts on how a traditionalist best are able to live their lives in the West Anno Domini 2011. It is yes my thoughts and no definitive in any way, but hopefully it can bring some personal reflections and thoughts to others about themselves in relation to traditionalism. Julius Vola was on a similar track when he wrote Ride the Tiger, but since I do not agree with him fully, and since it has almost been half a century ago, Ride the Tiger was written, today's video might still offer something of value. Anarcho-nihilism and post-moralism From a conservative perspective, one can only regret today's youth culture. There is no higher ideals, and there's experimenting widely with both drugs, crime, and sex. Atheism, satanism, subcultures, and ethnic conflicts is epidemically occurring in today's youth. As a conservative, one can but cry. But we are not conservatives. We are traditionalists. It is my firm conviction that, as a traditionalist, and an Indo-Aryan, one does not become a strong and individualized person by just sitting at home and reading books. One must get to know oneself by testing oneself, which one to some degree does in critical situations. Furthermore, one should do useful acts of symbolism that cleanse your mind from the programming, socialization, and conditioning received from your childhood, then it may be multiculturalism, moral objectivism, or pacifism. Ebola had, for an example, been dataist and experimented with drugs and magic, and then took part in two world wars. As a traditionalist, one therefore do not only have to see the post-moral culture and ethical nihilism as an abomination, but also be able to see it as a resource which can be used in accordance with our movement. It is absolutely full of opportunities for critical situations and also full of potential brothers within tradition. What should be remembered, however, is Evola's words in the context, quote, the differentiated man could do anything as long as he knows that he would manage without it." End quote. This means that if you smoke dope once to study how you function when you were high, that is one thing. Do it more times because you cannot resist and you've got a problem. And are you unsure whether you are able to resist? Do not test it at all. A degree of self-preservation drive is nothing negative, on the contrary, and besides, you do not have to test everything. Wage Slavery The problem with paid work is that it is very time-consuming, and it also steals a lot of energy that can be used for other purposes, to sell oneself, one's time and one's loyalty to a person who, in nine cases of ten, lacks all what authority and legitimacy is called, may also feel degrading. At the same time, there is truth in the saying, a good man prepare himself, which means that alternative ways to find such a social welfare should be avoided by an Indo-Aryan as best as he can. He should strive to be an independent worker or the owner of a company small business. Capitalism reduces the individual to a social atom without more control over their fate. If there's an economic depression, all in a particular industry might lose their jobs completely regardless of their personal qualities, and both the traditionalist and the left suddenly is standing on the streets. 
The goal of a traditionalist must therefore be to make oneself as autonomous and self-governing as possible in relation to the capitalist economy. Self-employment may be an option here as well as to move around in the grey economy as much as possible. Evola worked, as far as I know, not one day in his life as a wage slave, but it is one of the points where I disagree with him. To come out into society through paid work is still educational and is in a sense a critical situation. Sufis says of celibacy and monastery life that it is easy to turn our backs on society. The truly difficult task is to be at or in the center of society yet living a spiritual life. Hindus are on a similar track where it isn't until the end of one's life, as one tend to be ascetic, when one has already passed the demands of the social life. The same applies to the traditionalists. It is easy to fantasize about living out in the woods in order to avoid the terrible Kali Yuga, but such an attitude is not Faustian in any way. The society of the Kali Yuga is a society of challenge, not something overly powerful. Get an education, a highly paid job with much influence, and then you can choose to disassociate from it all. You can also do much more good as a traditionalist from the top of society than you can do when you're living on welfare. family. Evola argued that the differentiated man had such a small chance finding a woman with which to form a traditional family with, that it was just as well as to not even try. You won't find someone worthy in this age. There are far and few in between, my friend. He was here speaking from personal experience, and died childless and unmarried. Although he had several heterosexual partners, nor in this point do I agree with Evola's choice. One minute he says that the natural authority is something which is noticed uh, automatically. The next moment he says that in the case of women it is not so. Furthermore, the views of a traditional family differs little between us North Germanics and the Italian tradition to which Evola belonged. For us, it is natural with more equality between the partners, and it should therefore be much easier to form a family in this age for us. We also have more arena in which to find the type of submissive hyperfeminine women Evola appeared to have preferred. To give up their duty in bringing their bloodline into the future, just because you happen to be born in the age of a Kali Yuga, feels like cowardice, defeatism, and betrayal. If anything, it is now that we must be stronger, more productive, and persistent than ever. It's not a time in which to give up, because if we do and we do not survive, it is to do it for the last time, forever. It is even more important to make sure the bloodline continues, especially in the age of the wolf, when people's very existence is under the threat from both within, dysgenic, and from outside. Moreover, it is a critical situation in itself to build a relationship with someone of the opposite sex and then to form a family and raise children to become good small traditionalists. A few words about celibacy here at the end. Celibacy is something you can try for a period to see if you're able to do it. I myself have, but doing it for longer periods is unnatural and does not give you something in return. The marginal utility of celibacy is strongly decreasing, so to speak. Property and money When it comes to property, one should seriously consider listening to the mystic's warning of being wary of one's possession, starting to own oneself, rather than vice versa. It is very easy to become so accustomed to one's high standard of living that we do not dare stand up for what is right against one's employer, for example, due to fear of not being able to pay off their car 
or pay their expensive rent. A traditionalist can and should have economic autonomy, but the right attitude to this must also be constantly kept alive. Personally, I see it as an important educational-wise experience to have tried to live on a very thin ice, but it is just an experience, something you do once and then never again. You see the world with new eyes when you have no income for several months. It unplug you from the matrix. Very important is also to have a distanced attitude to the consumer society. There's great risks of becoming a wage slave, but the risk of becoming a slave of consumption is even greater since it is oh so much more fun to consume than to wage slave. Here too, the sophist mindset applies. You shall not dress like a bum to show and prove to others how one is turning their back against the consumer society. It's only counterproductive and indicate a mental obsession. When it comes to clothes, I like to keep a poker face on. People seeing me would have no idea that I'm actually against parts of the consumer society when they would first see me. There's far more productive, efficient and rewarding ways to show your discontent on that on than letting it uh, manifest into an aesthetic expression. One must not begin to devote their entire free time to watch soap operas. In fact, if you are able to avoid watching television except when it comes to DVDs which you've decided to watch, traditionalist movies like Braveheart, for example, which you know are productive or offer you something of value and resonates with your identity, history, goals and visions. It is possible to continue with everything from social relations, where one should have a few close friends, blood brothers from a traditionalist perspective, and a large number of acquaintances that you can do without, to leisure activities where one should reside often and for long periods in nature and gain discipline over their bodies, but also be able to keep themselves in social contexts in the middle of the Kali Yuga. But hopefully the basic features are clear in my view on the whole.